Okay, I have made so many recordings for this, so I hope this time it actually works. This is me explaining how I use Scrivener, and before I start, I should first say, number one, I'm only explaining how I use it. I'm definitely not any kind of an expert on Scrivener. There's plenty of things I have no idea how to do. I did take the tutorials or whatever they had when I first got it, but, you know, that, that was like several years ago, so I don't really remember everything. Um, I would recommend, if you are at all interested as you're watching this, that you should maybe, first of all, look for somebody who knows more. Um, but secondly, I find that just getting the free trial run can make a big difference. If you do NANO, uh, or National Novel Writing Month, I would recommend that you actually um, do the trial run during November. And then what you can do is, I don't know if they're still doing it, but when I got it several years ago, they actually did a thing where you got 50% off if you ended up um, getting the 50,000 word count, which I was able to do. So that put it from $40 to $20 for me personally, and it's some of the best $20 I've spent. So I'm going to use two different books I'm working on to give examples of how I personally use this, and um, hopefully it's helpful. As you can see, first of all, this is just the way I have it set up. Um, I have the binder on the left, and then I have, there's a split view that I like to do. You can do different versions of it. Um, this is just my preferred. And then I usually have the comments on the side. There's other things you can do, like notes and blah, 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 but I prefer to do the comments. This is what the other ones look like. Um, you can do a synopsis. You can have these little document references, keywords, uh, metadata and then snapshots. Uh, snapshots is actually really cool. If you're in the process of editing something and like let's say, I don't know, I was gonna change it so Julian instead of saying said, said Rick or something as the nickname. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep it that way and I was like, oh man, if I, you know, redo it just once, it's not that big of a deal. But if I were to be you know, redoing a whole bunch of said on the same page, then maybe it would be annoying. You can do a snapshot beforehand and then do whatever editing you're doing. And then I think you can do another snapshot, but basically snapshot, there's this rollback option right here and it would let you roll back to the previous snapshot. So if you're doing some sort of major editing that might be a big pain in the ass to unedit essentially, I would recommend doing snapshot. But I pretty much never use those because, I don't know, I'm lazy. <laughs> I like comments primarily. So, um, just also, I guess in case you want it real quick, these are the menus. There's File, Edit, View, Project, Documents, Format. Um, one thing you can do on Format is you can do different presets for formatting, which is kind of nice. Um, tools, so you do get things like Writing Tools, blah, blah. And then, you know, the Window and Help. So I'm going to just real quick try to show you two different ways I did it, like I said, or I use it. This is Julian Files. In Julian Files, I um, have, I can't show you because there's too many spoilers, but I have everything set by date, as you can see, for each chapter. And I probably should start back a second and explain. So when you do this, you can choose the type of book that you're writing. I'm doing a novel format. Julian Files is just like a novel with a bunch of chapters, right? But Incarnations is, oops, probably spoilers down there, is a novel with um, parts. So you can see the part names here. So when I um, export or compile or however you want to call it, Julian Files versus exporting or compiling um, incarnations they come out differently on the book format and that's you know obviously completely up to you I don't have any need for parts in Julian files so I do those differently um, but what you'll notice is there's you know the chapter numbers and then this is the scene and then this is the chapter and this is the scene and so on and so forth and some of these have more than one in a chapter so those are scenes and it's just like any book, you know, sometimes you'll have more than one scene in a chapter and sometimes the chapter is just a single scene. When you get to the point where you want to compile and all of that, you do have the ability to choose what type of 
I guess, design you want. And, you know, for example, you could say in between, let's say these were two scenes in the same chapter, in between them I could have just a space. I could put like a plus sign or whatever kind of symbol I want. It's completely up to you. I'm not going to go through every part of Scrivener because that would take 12,000 years and I also just don't know every part of Scrivener. But, you know, maybe this will help for the people that are curious. So one of the things you can also see at the bottom, it shows you the words and then the character number. Um, there's this little, like, dot here, which is kind of cool. You can say that you want to set a target for that. So let's say I'm at 49.58. Let's say I wanted it to be 49.60, right? And that's the target. Oh, it's like saying I already hit it. Hold on, let's see. 49.60. 80. So I think, okay, word, word, word. I'm just going to do stuff here until it gets to it. So you can kind of see there's a little red, and then it went green. I don't know if you could see that, but it tells you if you hit the target or not at the bottom, which is kind of nice. And, you know, obviously now it's saying I didn't hit it. And, you know, that's up to you if you want to do a target or not. I frankly don't normally, but, you know, maybe for some reason you have a setup where you want to make sure you have a certain number of words. It's kind of a cool thing. Um, so, see, this is why I forget what I'm talking about half the time. So when I write in here, this is the way I tend to do it. Obviously do it however it makes the most sense for you. But there's a few things I wanted to point out. Number one, I tend to have, this is usually the scene that I am currently writing. I tend to do that in the left side just because for me this is, I don't know, the easier thing to do. In the right hand side, what I tend to do for myself is have a um, reference material of some sort. So that can be many things. Like let's say I'm writing this scene and it's let's say mid or late in the book and Julian will say is not a main character or he is but he's one of many main characters and let's say Julian hasn't had a POV for like three chapters and I've had some other POV in the meantime and when I'm writing this new chapter of Julian's I want to remember what was Julian's mindset last time we saw him or what was the last thing he was doing or whatever it is then I would open up that chapter over or that scene over on this side and you just select it by um, just you can see it's blue here versus blue here it's whichever one you're on and then you just go over on the binder and you just select whichever one you want it to be so you know let's say I want it to be the Monday instead it would be that but we're going with the Saturday and then other things that I'll do sometimes if I don't have a specific other scene over here to Reference, I will have, um, I usually do character question templates, I guess, and they're just kind of a rundown of information about that character, and that's usually what I will do. It'll say, like, you know, their name or their age or whatever important information, so I might have that over here, or if I have maybe the breakdown of the chapters, like this is the summary of what's supposed to be happening, then I'll have that over here instead. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Um, another cool thing about Scrivener is you can import almost anything. So if you have a like a reference material on a website that you found, you can put it, you can import it and it'll go into the binder on the left and then you can um, pull that up over here if you want. So I think, did I do that in incarnations? This is kind of an example. Um, I have a better example, but I don't want to scroll all the way down because there's just too many spoilers you can get on the left-hand side. But this is an example. So, for example, I... How many times am I going to say example? <laughs> so I, for some reason, at some point along the way, needed to know information about fractures. And so I did some quick Google research, and I was, you know, looking around for information. And then I found this, and I thought, oh, this would be helpful information to remember. So... I just copied and pasted it into here. Now you can also do it another way where you would actually have it as a PDF file or other stuff like that, but in this case I just wanted to copy paste. And then, you know, I can 
have that information and then I know all of the crap I need to know about broken bones. So this is an example of when I would use it like that. Now what you'll notice is on um, incarnations versus Julian files, I do it a little bit differently. Ju oh, shoot, see I keep giving spoilers on accident. Julian files, I just have the date and incarnations, you'll see that I have numbers and then dash blah blah blah. So the numbers are the number of words in the scene and obviously I must have deleted a word at some point because that is a little bit different. Um, I just do that for myself because incarnations just varies a lot by chapter and by scene with how long it is and because I'm not doing things broken down by date the way I am in Julian files it's just I find it easier for some reason for me to just glance at it and see like okay that was a long ass chapter versus that's a shorter scene and I don't know it's just kind of something I decided to do but you know you don't obviously have to do that and then I after that I have a, just some words that kind of help me remember okay what was going on in that scene um, because again I don't have the dates to use as designations. Another thing you'll notice is I have all of these colorful things up here. So this is something that I kind of discovered in the process of working on incarnations. Um, when you compile it will obviously compile whatever text you have, right? So what I had started doing when I very first began this is when I wanted to leave a note to self at the beginning, you know, whatever it was, like um, now that I'm almost at the end of the book, the I leave comments for myself at the beginning with a list of the bullet points of what I want to achieve in that scene. But, you know, it could be anything, right? Maybe I just need to note to myself about, you know, in this scene have this, or remember that such and such thing was in a previous scene, or questioning myself about something, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. What I was doing before was I was doing this, and then I would, you know, highlight it, and the way you make new comments is you can just hit the little plus sign, oops, if you hit it correctly, and then you do like, blah, 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 right? Okay, here's the thing, though. Okay, see all these freaking spoilers everywhere. Um, the issue is that this is actual text, right? So when you compile it, it's going to have blah, 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 and then it'll go into the actual wording. And that's like a huge pain in the ass to have to delete when you're in the process of compiling. So I do not recommend doing that. I recommend just doing this. Just do a bunch of little spaces. I'll show you how you do it. I just go to the very top. I always hit enter because, I don't know, I'm kind of an idiot and I don't know how to get it to not go into the previous comment. I just do space, 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 and then highlight the spaces. I go over and I hit the little plus sign, and then it always highlights that, so I just hit the left key and then enter, enter, and then blah, blah, note to self, right? Then, if you want to color it, code it, you can. You don't have to. You'll notice that I have a bunch of different colors. That's because it just helps designate between different um, comments in a row right there, since they're all just spaces. Uh, and then when I am in the actual writing of it, I do use the color system a bit. It's kind of half-assed, to be honest, but like red I do for things that probably need to be fixed or are really important. Orange are things that are like important notes to self. Green and purple and blue are all have kind of different designations, etc. But one of the things, if you decide you want to color code it, you just right-click, and then it comes up with the different options. So I'm just going to say, let's see, we'll do purple because I don't have another purple close by. Um, and then I just delete so that I get them on the same line. And then, you know, if you want to and you're like, oh crap, I don't remember what that green is, you can click the green um, or you can click like the blue, you know, whatever, and it'll pull you to the correct one. Can't really tell because they're all on the side here in a row, but it also will tell you the date and time of when you wrote it. So if you are... Um, trying to show you there but if you know if you're like me and you're writing this over, oh crap that's great hold on I don't know what I just did who knows what I did anyway um, if you're like me and you're writing this over 
like years and years and years. It's kind of fun to have that information there. You could, of course, delete it if you don't really need it. Um, so those are the main things that I really like about it. There's a lot of other stuff that goes into it. Um, like I mentioned before, when you go to compile, there's a lot of formatting options that you can do. And it's nice, it will let you drill down and choose font and size of font and weight of font and all that stuff, um, paragraph spacing, all of those things. And how, basically how do you, like what kind of document do you want it, like RTF or Word doc or whatever, and how do you want it done and et cetera. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention real quick is backing up. So you can back up two different ways. You can back up now or back up to. I really highly freaking recommend um, backing up frequently. And uh, see, now all of a sudden, and Scrivener is not working, but normally I don't have this problem. I think it's because there's something jinxed with me trying to record this freaking thing. Um, so here's how I do it. I have Scrivener itself, like the actual project. By the way, you want to have a new project per, like, book. So don't try to do, you know, three books in one Scrivener project. That would just become a huge mess. I highly recommend against that. Just make completely different projects. It's super easy to do. That's the way it's made. Um, it's worth it to do it that way. So I um, have basically like a... Uh, what is it called? Like Dropbox kind of thing. And I have my Scrivener project actually saved on Dropbox itself, right? And then I do backup two. And when I do backup two on whatever computer I'm using, whether it's my laptop, my uh, desktop, whatever it is, I have a file or like a folder, I guess I should say. And in that folder is where I have those backups for that particular project for that computer. So like my um, laptop, you know, what I, whenever I'm working on it, the laptop will have whatever backups from that. And then whenever I'm working on my desktop, the desktop will have whatever backups from when I was working on there. The document itself will always be up to date regardless of whether I'm working on my laptop or my desktop or whatever because I have it in Dropbox. So that's why you want to have it in a shareable format because it's a massive pain in the ass otherwise. But having it back up onto the actual computer is very nice. Um, I've had a couple of problems with Scrivener over the years where it just all of a sudden loses like everything or it most recently it lost all of the comments. Like I just, I could see where I was supposed to have comments, but the comments themselves just like did not exist. And that was quite stressful, let me tell you, because I have, you can't really tell because I'm trying to keep spoilers away, but I have a shit ton of information that's in these comments that needs to be there because some of it is stuff that I don't really have replicated elsewhere, um, or it's just super important. So I was really, like, freaking out about that, and the good news is that I was able to figure it out. Um, the people that work in Scrivener's, um, like, help section, I guess. They're they're so freaking nice. Every I've had to write in, I think, two, maybe three times saying, hey, I had such and such problem. How do I fix it? And both times they've been just really cool about getting back to me immediately. And I just, I really, I really like them. So um, I'm just making sure I'm still recording because knowing me, I would have stopped recording and that would have been grand. So, um, that's one thing. And then the other thing I do is the way that I was able to get my comments back, I just, it was, it was, com honestly, it was completely fucked up on my desktop. There was no fixing it whatsoever. I still don't know exactly what happened or why. However, because I had these backups on both my desktop and on my um, laptop, it, the backups were completely jacked up on my desktop for some reason. But I was eventually able to use one of the backups on my laptop, and that let me just, I didn't lose anything, I got all the comments back, everything was grand, because I back up like a crazy person just all the time. So the other thing is, you should also, I would recommend, um, periodically 
then drag one of the backups onto something like Google Docs or some other online cloud type system you may have. And I do that, especially after I've, you know, if I haven't for a while or if I have any, you know, major change or some scene that I really like that I especially don't want to lose or whatever the hell it is. It's super important because, um, again, you can run into situations where your Dropbox gets all jacked up, your desktop and your Surface get all jacked up, or lost or stolen or whatever happens. But as long as you still have that backup on a cloud-type setting, you can still get your stuff back. The way Scrivener works is all of this information like this dude and this dude and all of the crap, all of these things are actually saved as little RTF files. So you don't ever, I, I did one time lose, like actually lose an entire thing, like just assume that this fractures and treatment thing just pff, into the mist. Who knows where the hell it went? Who knows what the hell happened? Um, but that was something that got all jacked up. And so that one, I will say one time I did lose something and was never able to recover it. But I still don't know really what happened in that case. All of the other times, if I thought I lost something, I actually did not. It was including the comments. Everything was still there because it essentially just saves them as RTF files, but then it saves them with weird, you know, it's like 6.RTF, 192.RTF. 78.rtf and they're all these numbers that don't really have any chronological order in context of it's not like one two three four going down the chapters it's all over the place so you can't it's hard for you to compile it in your mind chronologically but Scrivener knows what it's doing but let's say Scrivener completely fails and you cannot get the program working to save your life you will not have lost this actual text. This actual text will remain in an RTF file somewhere on your computer. I just remembered, I think what I did that completely messed everything up and made me lose the comments and all that, so don't do this yourself, is I decided to, um, I think I cleared all the temporary internet files and then temporary files or something like that from my um, PC desktop and the way they must do Scrivener Windows, it must, I guess, save information there because that's, I think, what completely destroyed it. Anyway, so those are the main things. Um, I think, let me just see real quick. I might have put, okay, so here's an example. I remember now I had kind of explained um, one of the previous uh, recordings of this. I wanted to show you guys a little bit better how you... If you wanted to use these other things up here, how you would use them. So you can do document notes, right? Um, again, I don't normally do this because I'm lazy, <laughs> but maybe you would want to. You can do a synopsis and it'll show you, um, okay, here's what's going on. I mean, obviously you would type it in, but you can tell yourself, oh, this is what's going on. Then you can say, do you want to include and compile? Yes, you do. Um, you can label it things like, you know, scene versus chapter, notes, blah, blah. You can label it, is it first draft, title page, final draft, etc. done. You can do document notes. In this case, I did the document notes, just, you know, note to self, this is like what's going on, right? Then you can also do document references. So I think what I did here is I think I referenced, um, Vicente is one of the characters over here. And I think I just referenced his character profile page, um, which I'm not going to click on it just in case I did because I don't, again, spoilers. Um, then you can do keywords. So I was like, okay, cool. Lucenti's in here. Well, you know who else is in here? So is Kieran. So boop. And then, it, of course, it hid everything so you couldn't see anything. Okay, so also Harper is in here. And so is Basin. So we'll just do all those guys. Um, I don't know if the colors just kind of randomly choose or what's going on there. But if I wanted to, I could, in every single scene, I could do keywords like these characters or this, I don't know, 
like location or whatever it is, you could do those keywords there. And then I think there's a way for you to search by keyword and pull up everything that has, for example, the Kenti listed as a keyword. Um, other things you can do, start date, start time, end date, end time, location, stuff like that. I, um, ha I haven't done that, but I could. Um, here is a snapshot, snap, snapchat, well, snapshot, um, and I don't want to mess anything up, so I will show you a snapshot. Jesus, now I keep saying snapchat. Here's snapshot. So, do, 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 and then I want to say, um, 16. Okay, so now I have a snapshot of what was going on on this uh, scene on today at 1.44 p.m. or whatever time it is. And then we get right back to, um, you know what, in fact, let me show you real quick. Okay, let's say, now I'm like, uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh yeah, this is great. I'm writing some real wonderful stuff. I'm so happy. Woo! And then I'm like, yeah, this is cool. Oh, wait, that was a terrible idea. Now I can roll back. Um, yes, I want to... Yeah, we'll do that. That's fine. Okay. So then... See? All of that crap is gone. So that's just something you can do if you need to. Um, I Honestly, I underutilize that. I think that's a really cool option, but I just haven't done it yet. Real quick, I'll just show you, this is the other way you can do if you wanted to have it up and down, or let's say you don't want split view at all, you can just do full view. It just drives me nuts to do that, so I always do split view. The one thing that sucks is if you switch to full view, and then you go back to split view, you lose what you had in the second one, as you see. Now it's just doubling up on this one, so, I mean, not the end of the world, but, you know. Um, if you don't want this guy going anywhere. How did you do this? There is a way, I think it's here, lock in place. And then if it's locked in place, then even if I'm like trying to click on other things, oops, okay, see this does, again with the freaking spoilers, okay, I'm clicked on here, it will not let me click on something else, but you could see that it would let me click on something else on this guy. So. That's just something you can do if you keep, if you're like me and like sometimes you're just going back and forth between these dudes and you end up accidentally choosing the wrong one, you can do that. So, um, that's kind of the overview. Um, when you do get to the point of wanting to compile it, you would compile it here. And then I periodically compile, I mean, because I'm sharing mine with uh, readers and beta readers and then I compile it as like RTF documents periodically and then I just have the information and blah blah and it's just the book then it's not all of this background crap and um, again like I said that lets you choose how you want to design it so you can do all of that stuff and I guess that's it maybe the only other thing I'll show you is what happens when you do a new project so this is the way it looks when you get a new project. I would say definitely watch these tutorials if you are, you know, trying this. You can do just a blank project. You can do fiction. And then this is what I was talking about. Um, novel is what Julian Files is. Novel with parts is what Incarnations is. You could do short story as well. You could do nonfiction. Um, nonfiction with subheads, research proposal, undergraduate humanities essay, script writing, all this cool stuff. And then miscellaneous, ooh, recipe collection, how fun. So it's kind of up to you. Like let's say we were doing, I don't know, script writing, and we wanted to do screenplay. Then you can just create it. Oh, um, test. Create. So then it'll tell you always, like, when you very first create a new project, It'll tell you this. It'll have all this info like, hey, dude, here's how you would use it, blah, blah, blah. Um, then you have the, this is the scene. You can do this, by the way, also in the novel format where you can, that's where I had that thing that said, like, this is what is in this chapter or this scene, blah, blah, whatever. Um, then you can have the scenes and the front matter. You can have characters and, you know, whatever it is that you want. Um, 
you can view things a different way as up here. It's really completely up to you. Um, oh, this is interesting. It automatically caps locks because it's a scene. So, anyway, that is something I just kind of wanted to show you and just give you an idea of how Scrivener works. I personally really love it, and I do recommend it, and I am very happy with the purchase. I'm very happy with their customer service. Um, even though sometimes they couldn't answer my questions, they were always super nice and very responsive, and I just really appreciate that. And, you know, the company is always working to improve. And they do the trial, free trial, for 30 days, and they usually will give you like 50% off or some other discount during National Novel Writing Month in November, so that's pretty awesome. So I guess that's what I'm going to go with for now. I hope it was helpful in some regard. And again, I don't, I'm not an expert, so if you have um, super detailed questions or you want somebody who is an excert, expert, there are a lot of people out there that kind of do Scrivener tutorials as like their thing. And um, so you can probably find people that either you could pay to explain things better to you if they're super good or just, you know, look on YouTube or something and probably find all sorts of options. So I hope everybody has a good day. And sorry, this took like 10,000 hours, but at least we had 2,000 less because my dog didn't suddenly start squeaking her toy in the middle of it like every freaking other time I tried. So have fun with Scrivener and have fun with writing.